Hello and welcome to this news pod of In the Hyperloop where we discuss current events and articles and social media of Hyperloop companies. First, we're going to talk about the University of Toronto Magazine article on TransPod. They profile Ryan, who's a co-founder of TransPod. It really gets in depth about what kind of issues TransPod is dealing with these days as they build a test track in France, as well as the core technology in Toronto. I'd highly recommend it. It gives you a really good insight of what their plans are for the future and how Hyperloop will uh, be constructed. Next, I want to talk about HyperPoland. This is an article about what they think um, Hyperloop will be like in the future in Europe. And they're partnering with another group to forecast uh, emerging trends for different markets that might be disrupted by Hyperloop. Next, we're going to move to Virgin, and we're going to stay with Virgin for a while because this is a really interesting article on the main page by Josh, uh, one of the co-founders of Virgin Hyperloop One, and it just kind of gets into why is he doing this, why is he spending so much time on this project, and what will it mean for the future and for him, and it's just kind of an interesting article of a personal view from inside uh, a team. So next, I heard uh, on Twitter uh, a couple days ago that um, Saudi Arabia reportedly cancels a deal with Hyperloop One. This is a huge shock. And um, as you can see in this article, not much is known about um, what's going on with this contract with the country. There's a lot of politics at play. Um, we're just going to have to wait and see on what's exactly happening with this. But we want to talk now about the release of the um, report, a feasibility study of Virgin Hyperloop One in Missouri. And this is just a really incredible um, milestone for Virgin Hyperloop One. And their partners with the Missouri Hyperloop Co Coalition have been working really hard. Let's just listen in to this brief video. Maybe the most exciting technology in the world today. If we had something like Hyperloop in place, and you could go from Kansas City to St. Louis in 26 minutes. What that effectively does is it creates an economic development mega region right in the heart of the country. This is where the U.S. interstate system began. And the reason that the U.S. interstate system began here is because if you're going to build a network, you start in the middle. And that's something that we have that no other place has. They have the geographic middle ground of the United States. And uh, I just want to highlight this other bit at the very end. What's the social impact? What's the economic impact? What are the demand models saying? How many people will actually use it between Kansas City and St. Louis and, and Columbia? And we're gonna know down to the foot where the route would go. Virgin Hyperloop One is telling us and other regions that they wanna make some decisions as early as 2019, and they wanna start breaking ground as early as 2020. The net so early decisions in 2019 and breaking ground in 2020. Um, we do know that there's a bunch of other groups that are... The result of this is that the company that is leading commercialization of this, Virgin Hyperloop One, came out and said, Missouri is one of the top five, if not top three routes in the world that they're considering for the first inner city built. That's an amazing thing. We have done, I think, a better job than any region in the world of truly creating public and private sector collaboration around this. So, so yeah. They're one of the top and it's going to be really exciting. Um, let's look at some of the other materials that were released. Um, and this is a um, executive summary, but it gets kind of into what exactly the study was. The actual study, I don't believe, has been released, only this executive summary, um, just about the vi viability of I-70 route. Um, they really do stress that um, this feasibility study was just looking at um, you know, the opportunity of uh, the right of way, the environmental, and just whether it could be built. Now they're going to look at where the portals will be and um, figuring out locations of auxiliary structures and um, pricing and demand economic models. We have heard a little bit that the uh, price for this route would be very cheap and affordable, about $30. Um, and yeah, it's just a pretty amazing um, route to consider. It's perfect straight uh, line. 
So I would highly recommend you follow uh, Virgin Hyperloop One's Twitter accounts and social media. They're putting out a lot of press about this these days, and it's just really exciting. So that does it for me for this news pod, and uh, stay in the loop.